Hey guys, it's Eric Weingarten with Weingarten Racing. I want to thank all of you guys that are watching the dimpled um, intake port. And one of the things that got asked quite a bit was about wet flow. I did not address that in the video before. And the reason for it is, it's, I can't give a quantitative answer about wet flow. I can't positively identify a gain or a loss um, besides a visual representation of anything to do with wet flow. So in other words, um, with airflow, it's real easy. We could just look at a number and say, hey, it gained flow or it lost flow. With wet flow, it's, there's no real way to give you that exact information. So it's a lot of speculation. Anyway, one of the things though that did get brought up was why don't you spray, spray dicum in there. For those that don't know what it is, this is dicum, it's blue fluid. You can use it on valve seats and stuff whenever we do valve jobs, we'll spray it on the head and then we'll cut the seat and you can see what's been removed. But anyway, this is an aerosol. And what we'll do is we'll spray it into the port and I'm gonna spray it from about this distance, give it a couple of toots and let the air get sucked in and pull it that way. And then we'll take the head off and we'll see what the pattern looks like. Hopefully, I'm only gonna do it like three times maybe. Probably should do it two, but I'm gonna go for three because I hate for it to have nothing. But anyway, we'll see what it looks like and see what's happening. Um, I'm gonna turn on the bench, but I do wanna point this out. Um, the valve lift it's at is at 700 lift. And the reason for it is if you watch the other videos, you would have saw that at 600 lift, it actually flowed more than it did at 700 lift. So I'm more curious, so that's part of the reason why I'm doing it at 700 lift, to see what the liquid's doing. I do also plan to do it on the non-dimpled port, but just not today. So I'll probably tag it on this video, but you may not see it in the correct order. Anyway, so I'm gonna set this down, put on my air protection, turn on the bench, and give it a couple of toots, and you'll get to see that. Okay, we'll take off the head. Hopefully it's got some kind of remnant of something we'll get to see. I've done this before in the past and as a warning for those that do it, if you leave it on one, this it even has a warning label that it's flammable. So probably not the best idea to leave it on, but if you leave it on too long, the flow instantly goes down and kind of changes things. And the reason why is the dicum will actually stick to the back of the valve and it messes up the angles on the valve job itself. So it makes the flow look worse than what it is. So it kind of messes things up. But anyway, we're gonna take this off. We'll take a look and see if we see anything. All right. Okay, this is what I see immediately. I probably did spray too much. You can kind of see. Probably should have just done two quick sprays. Three might have been overdoing it. Maybe we'll redo it in a little while. My wife just gave me an angry face, so maybe not. <laughs> but anyway, um, we'll see. Let me take off the valve and let's see what it looks like underneath. Okay, here's what the dicum showed. I sprayed too much. I should have known better. Um, anyway, it doesn't really reveal a whole lot besides that you sprayed too much. Um, the only spot you can see it actually is just like there. Let me get a flashlight. Well, maybe not because I can't. There it is. There you go. You can see where it landed. It splatters on the back wall and then rolls right there. So at least you get some idea what's going on. Because, I mean, after all, you think about it, less like the flashlight, it's spraying in here, and it didn't hit anywhere on the top. Like, I can do this whole port here. No, maybe some there. Nope. There's none. It doesn't hit anywhere until it hits the back wall of the bowl. Right there. And that's where you see. So, sorry if my lighting sucks. I'm not, I'm not a camera guy. But anyway, there it kind of gives you some indication. Let's look at the rest of the chamber though, and I'll get you a better view. You can see it comes out, blam, and then kind of carries. The reason why it smooches over is because there's too much. I think if I had used less, I still would have had the same pattern, just probably not as much. So that's kind of an interesting result. I might try this after I get done porting the whole thing to see what happens with it. But um, yeah, hmm. Let me look at the bore now. I want to see if it did anything on the bore. Okay, so this is a cylinder bore so you can see what's happened. This is the dicum you see. 
It's weird that it's there, I will say, because if you think about it, it's really sm smashed here, and somehow it's over here. Like, if we look at the port itself, really it was here, but somehow it got over here. I would expect it more on this side, and none over there. But evidently I was wrong. So, and you can see how far down it goes. So I'm going to clean all this off. I know I didn't do a very good job. I might redo this test so you can see too much. And then I'll maybe I just do one quick toot. I don't see any at the bottom here. Thank God. I'd be mad if it got under my bench. I've done that before. Anyway, there you go. Hopefully that's a better view. Something to think about. Okay, this is with me uh, spraying much less than at a higher angle. And I'll show you over in the head. But I'm over here by the bench, so I thought, thought I would show you the pattern. There's where it is on the bore. Trying to see if there's anywhere else. That's a negative. So that's the die come from the spray. Now let's take a look at the head. Now remember, this is a much smaller spray than I did the first time. So let's take a look what the head looks like. Okay, this is the head. Same spot, I just didn't spray as much. So hence, it's not coming through like it did before into the chamber. So by spraying more, it did that. But it did do something weird. But I'm going to lay the head down to kind of show you what I, how I sprayed it so you can see what happened. So lay the head down like this. So let's pretend this is on the bench. My wife didn't want to film again. Don't blame her. I was actually spraying like up here, about three foot away. So what's happening is the air is grabbing it and pulling it into the port. But look inside the port now. You see the blue ridge, which I know I'm, I really wish my wife would have stayed out here, but she got stuff to do, I guess. Oh, you can see that ridge right there. You see it all the way there. By the way, you can see how it hits the vein, if the camera would focus correctly. All right, let me set it the down and I'll redo this. Okay, here's a better view of what's going on. As you could tell, hopefully you could see it there see that blue that's all the way down and i know the camera won't focus right for you to see it correctly but you can see it at the back there if the glare is not too bad you can see it on the vein itself you can see it on the back wall i mean it's pretty obvious but i wanted to show you that blue line I'll do my best to get it to zoom in on it yeah you see how it carries around remember i shot from like here and it carried it in and blam now, the reason why I think it's on the back wall has nothing to do with the dimples. I think what's happening is the short, seat, short side speed's too high. So the air actually hits the floor here, ramps, doesn't make the turn. Instead, it ramps and splats into the back wall. So if you're looking at it and you're like, well, it doesn't have that, it could be because the port shape's correct, not necessarily because of the dimples. In this case, I think the short side's wrong, and that's the reason why it's causing it to hit the back wall. But it did give us some information. Um, let me move my light a little bit so you can get a different view, hopefully. You can see it there better. See? The blue. Blam. And then you can see it on the um, vein itself. But right there is where it's hitting, just knocking it. Just ramping the short side and boom, right into it. So hopefully that gives you guys some understanding on that part. I will do it on the stock port that hasn't had any dimples to see if it changes. My thought is... Um, and by the way, it probably won't be on this video. Um, my thought is it probably won't. It probably do the exact same thing that happened on here. I don't know that it's going to be any better because the dimples are worse. Because the dimples will help um, atomization. I'm sure that they will. I don't doubt that for one minute. But what they will not do is fix a bad problem. So in this case, the short side's wrong. Um, and the dimples are not going to fix it. It may help it, but it did not fix it. So when I go to test on this, I'm betting you'll see the same thing. The trail, blam, on the back. But we'll find out later. I'm out of time for today. I gotta get to grinding. You guys, thanks for watching. Hopefully this gives you a better view of it. Maybe not. You can see the blue ridge right there on the port. And it gets thicker as it comes down. And you can see it on the vein itself. I wish I had a bigger light in there. See it there? You can see it all the way through there. Hopefully. That came from that. 
what it's telling me is, and I don't know that the dimples help with the wet flow at all, um, at least I'm sure they do, but what it's telling me more importantly is that the port's not correct. And what's trying to happen is, man, I hate this camera. I'm sure you guys are going nuts with it. But what's happening is the air is hitting this floor and it's ramping the short side and blah, right into the back wall. I don't think that the dimples are the reason for it or help. Okay, guys, I said I probably would tag it on at the end of this video. Well, I am. Here's what I did. I couldn't get my wife to come out here to film this one, but that's fine. You'll get the idea. I was getting ready to flow. I'm going to end up flowing all of these port stock just because I don't want there to be a variation in the port. And then when I go changing a valve job and maybe it flowed more, but it initially started off flowing more. So just to keep things consistent when we're doing all of our testing, I'm going to flow each one stock with the same valve that was used to flow this one stock. So anyway, I flowed this one stock and then I did the dicum. So as you can tell, there's no work done to it. It's exactly how it was. And I sprayed the dicum in just like I did in the last one. So this is what this one did. You can see it there, the back, which I hate how it, there you go. This is three sprays, okay? The dimpled one. Now this pour, I'll go ahead and tell you, it's like, it flowed slightly more than that one. This is the same lift point and you get the same result. I even tried, so just to let you know, I sprayed from like up here and about three foot away and I'm literally seeing it. Like you can see just a mist and I see a splat there at the back. I tried back here, even here, aiming lower, still got it there. So I did two here and then one here and it still, aimed, still hit the same spot. So anyway, you could see back in there, it's the exact same orientation as that one, except for this one has a larger blue line going all the way through compared to that one. So um, that's slightly different from the dimpled port as far as the airstream goes in the uh, wet flow part than this. Because it's the same three pumps that it tried to do it exactly the same as I did at that time on this one. And this is what I got. So I'm going to take it off and we'll look at the chambers to see if there's anything really different, but I highly doubt it. But anyway, uh, let's take a peek. This is what the cylinder wall looks like with the ASCAS port, no dimples. So you can see a slight shading there. All right, let's look at the chamber now. Okay, here's the chamber. You can see there's absolutely nothing. And the reason why is because I didn't spray as much as I did at the very beginning of this video. At the very beginning of the video, we got to see a trail coming through here and it would move over here on both this port, which is dimpled, and this one that is not dimpled, um, I did not. So I did three uh, squirts exactly here and here. So if you compare the two, um, really it looks like this one's definitely holding more fluid. It also has the line coming up, which you see here further than what the ASCAST one does. Let's just give you a little bit of light so you can kind of see. Lighting sucks. I'm really no good at this camera stuff. Probably should watch a YouTube video about it. But anyway, there you go. It's definitely bigger and heavier there on the dimpled one. Now, I can't say, well, it's because it was dimpled. That's the reason why there's more there. Because if I look at it, it almost looks worse. What I could say is it's probably the operator, me, who, even though I did three pumps, maybe I just didn't hold it down for a fraction of a second longer. Uh, maybe the angle of what I sprayed was different, but I tried not to aim it directly at the port. Tried doing above it and let gravity carry it into the port on both of them, except for this one, I did one lower just because I was seeing nothing. Um, so I did two and I didn't think anything was happening. Third one was down there. So same three pumps, just w one of the pumps on this one was at a lower shot because even at two, it had nothing. And I thought, well, I mean, barely anything there. So I really thought, well, that was waste. Um, hence the three at a different angle but it still put it, even though I shot it at a lower angle, it still put the fluid in the exact same spot. So just something to think about. I will say, and I really don't know if this camera is gonna capture this. Um, you can see how it's, I don't know if you can see it at all. It does hit off the, there you go. See the top of the, where the guide is, look slightly above it. You can see where fluids hit it and ricochet off, follow the light, boom. So that's something that might be causing it too. It's hitting that and then reflecting off. 
I don't know. I'm just giving you information. You're welcome to do whatever you want with it. Get a better idea there. And you can kind of see that on this one too. But anyway, hopefully that gives you something to think about. Um, I have no opinion on this besides that the short side's wrong. And the reason why it's doing this is because it's trying to ramp the short side and hits on the back wall. Beyond that, I dimpled or non-dimpled. I don't know that I could see much of a disadvantage or advantage at this point as far as this goes with Dykem if you're just looking at nothing but this. So anyway, there's some more information for you. But before I let you go, I'm actually going to show the flow numbers from this port compared to this one. So, and I'm not talking dimpled. Stock this port versus stock this port because they are slightly different. Maybe that affected it. So I can say for sure there is a slight flow difference in this still in this runner versus this one stock. So let's look at those numbers and compare real quick. Then I'll let you guys go. Okay, let's look at the flow numbers now. Ignore the exhaust, please, because I really didn't do anything with the exhaust, just didn't erase the numbers. The intake you're comparing. So this is the first one, which is now, which is this one. This is the what the dimpled one started out at. Before I did any work, I flowed it first. And then we have this one. So this one is this first one here. This one is the one I just got done. So if we compare the two, and forget 100 lift, because it is trying to suck open the valve a little bit, and I really don't care. At two tenths of an inch lift, then it's directly on. If you notice, they're within one CFM. 300, they're within one. Uh, 400, this one's slightly better. 500, it's slightly better. 600, now the difference is starting to grow. It's about four CFM better. And then if we look at um, 700, 319, it's significantly better. By the way, when I did the Dicom test, both were at 700. Okay, now look at 800, 341, 333. This one's definitely better. And then at 900, 345 to 343, peak 346 to 348. So they are really close when it's just on the, so just to point this out, if you look at flow numbers, the lower lift numbers, like two, three, typically that's all in the valve job. So as long as the valve jobs are the same and the chamber transitions is pretty much the same, they're gonna flow the same. But the rest of this, say after 400, then it's more on the port. So because these are ASCAS ports, um, there will be a slight difference from core shift. You get the idea. So point being is, this one did better than the other one. So that might have affected the reason why the Dica might be different, but I thought I'd show you, okay? Some of you may want me, why don't you just go ahead and dimple that one then we can see the difference. I'm not gonna waste this whole entire head just to dimple. Just, I'm just gonna tell you. So I did one, maybe when it's all said and done, I'm done doing stuff, I'll put some dimples on, we'll ch ch check again. Matter of fact, that's probably what I'm gonna do. But this one's gonna be the most, because from your votes, this is what you picked. You want the most aggressive 45 degree valve job I've got, that's what's going on this. This one's gonna be one I do my normal stuff on. This one's gonna be a 50 degree valve job. Then the second one you guys picked would be a 55. Um, which is the most aggressive valve job I have by far, period. That's going to be on this one. So this one's probably going to be, we're all in, everything you got. This one, we'll see what we got. We'll probably end up filling in some areas, adding some areas, and just see how good we can make it. But I'll let you guys pick what you want done. But so far, you've said if you want the most aggressive 45, you're getting it. You want the most aggressive seat period, you're getting it. And so I'm going to put both those in, and I'm going to blend them, and then we'll flow them, and we'll see how they do. I still have to flow this one stock because I don't want to give a bad example because I flowed this one stock. I'm going to flow this one stock too so we can see how much it gained from what it was stock and you get the idea. Anyway, stay tuned. I don't know when this is gonna next one will be out, but um, I'm time limited, but when I can, I'll get it out for you. You guys take care. One more thing about this. Uh, although you may not be um, entirely satisfied or maybe not feel like you got all the information about this dicom from this video, I'm going to go ahead and tell you this. It bugs me too. So what I'm gonna probably do is whenever I get done porting these, I'm gonna revisit this. So I'm gonna do this test again when the ports are more developed. So if you're feeling like you didn't get satisfied, like you wish you had more answers from this, me too. And I'm going to do that just, I'm gonna do more porting first and then try it again. So hopefully we can get some better answers. I'm gonna to try to buy a different color dye and we'll test a different valve list and see what happens. But um, anyway, hopefully you can give some more things to think about so just wanted to add that on. Guys, take care.